Hello there my fellow repairers of vehicles and other things. Uh, I've just got a bit of a uh, extra dialogue I'd like to add to this video as I didn't film it the best way possible because by the end of this repair I was really running out of time and I had to get it finished just as soon as possible. So I didn't have a lot of time to concentrate on how I filmed it and what I tend to do is set the camera up in a static position showing the details of how you do a repair. In this case it was a bit of a fail just because of the time constraints I was under. I actually had to take time off work to get this done. The weather continually hampered me and there was a lot of noise going on around me from both sides of whatever building work was going on. And one of the really frustrating things is when I was connecting up the pipes and doing the flares um, and that part of the job, the camera ran out of battery and I hadn't realized and because once I connected it up, I wasn't gonna undo it again. So that kind of got skipped over. But I think you've got the general idea of this repair. It, it's one that isn't that, complicated or difficult in that sense but it is uh, time consuming because you've got to get everything off the complexity really is is making the pipes you know i'm a nerd so i like to do this kind of thing you, you may be able to buy them from somewhere i don't know it's possible but like most nerds who have cars and do do i this is my hobby so i really like to do it and i just like to say that as i'm a diy mechanic i do have a normal job that i have to do so i can't just spend my time working on the car when I'm at work, so I have a 9 to 5 day job. At the end of part 3, I was describing how it had given me a problem with brake fluid leaking into the flaring tool and also um, damaging the paint on the pipes and making them slippery so you couldn't actually create a good flare. In the morning, it seemed that the brake fluid had kind of got to a level where it wasn't going to seep out of the pipes anymore, so I dried off the pipes and then I sanded them down as well as I could, so just to make them really all metal and no paint and then once I was happy with that I then reattempted the flares. In this case it worked so I'm very grateful that it actually happened. Right we're back again for yet another day so um, this this one's fine uh, I haven't done the flare on the actual um, car brake pipe yet because of the problem I had last night with this one and what happened was that because the brake fluid had got onto the uh, the sort of coating on this, it had kind of made it slippery and then a load of brake fluid went in there. What I'm going to try and do with this one, because after a while, um, I don't know how easy it is to see. Turn the light on. Here, there is a bend in the pipe. So after a while, this one actually stopped dripping brake fluid, um, which made everything a lot easier. So I'm going to see if I can drain brake fluid out of this, because there's, again, there's another bend in the pipe. This one's at the right length to, cr uh, to connect up, so we're happy with that. So this one, I've <laughs> now got, I'm going to have two pipe joints, so I've got to be a little bit careful what I do, but I'm going to just measure roughly the distance between here and there, and then I'm going to make up, um, I'm going to put a flare on the connector on this end and just put the pipe in, and then work out where to cut it so that we can get a good angle. I'm also going to have to work out what to do with this brake pipe clip because at the moment it interferes with um, uh, here because I've got a brake pipe connector on it. I was lucky to get it to flare there otherwise we're getting into like really complicated going back around here where there's more and I'm sure there's brake pipes here that's straight um, as you go along so along here but I just I just didn't really want to go there um, as you can imagine because I was getting very tired I think part of the problem was just tiredness so we'll have a look um, that's where I'm going to go from here and then I'm going to start trying to reconnect everything and then bleeding solution but I'm gonna put another one probably up here further but that having that there will just re-secure them and then they're roughly in line with where they were previously so I'm happy with that I'm 
Okay, we've reached this point where I've got everything connected up. So I've got the uh, replacement one at the back. Just need to make sure these are tight. Uh, I will double check them. This one in here is the original pipe. Then on connected onto here, which is the replacement pipe. Uh, you have to sort of move it around a bit. Uh, one thing I will say is, obviously when you're putting these in, do them with fingers. You don't want to thread these. Um, so make sure you can do them up your fingers before you um, get carried away with tightening them up because obviously threading threading any um, of these would just be a nightmare again because you'd have to chop off and create more um, and then once we've got this in position we can then just do our final kind of bendings and getting everything on the, the new pipes roughly aligned with where we want it um, just make sure that we're happy with where everything's sitting and I think I'm kind of getting to the point where we need to start uh, just checking what's uh, the routing of everything and then we are going to um, start bleeding the brakes and I think we're kind of about probably about 80-90% of the job now because the bleeding of the brakes um, and then we're kind of onto the position where we just need to make sure everything's um, I'm not going to put anything back under here no, no, don't put any shields on or anything till we've uh, been bleeding the brakes. Make sure these aren't leaking um, or seeping or anything weird. If they are, then a whole new world of pain will open up. But fingers crossed, we've got it right, and this is going to be uh, the last bit in a what I think is actually a very long winded and relatively um, hard to do job unless you've got just lots of time on your hands and the weather's good. Um, uh, or you've got a workshop, you've got a workshop and a ramp, it's probably really easy but I'm just finding it quite hard work from a DIY mechanics perspective um, I, and I, I do think it is a time consuming job just because of um, sort of having to get everything exactly right, checking the flare tights, making sure you understand what's connecting to what, routing uh, the brake pipe clips that fall off because they're corroded uh, on the studs that support them etc etc so from my perspective I think this is relatively complex but you never know some people might th think it's easy and might um, diminish me in the comments but as far as I'm concerned it's hard work okay that's all connected up okay. shut up <sighs> which is very annoying um, I live in a relatively urban area and it just seemed that there's this constant noise going on I knew that our neighbors uh, were having their garden done but it also meant that they had a mini digger. So some of the droning, low droning on the uh, sound is, is the mini digger with its diesel engine droning along in the background, driving around in someone else's garden, which unfortunately I can't, can't stop them from doing that. <sighs> okay, so here we are. We have our joins in place. We've got the initial clips, and then I'm just gonna work out what to do with the um, other side to clip it in place. Um, I haven't clipped them in because I wanna do a bit of uh, brake bleeding and stuff just to see how we're going um, and then once I'm happy we'll uh, probably clip it in properly but there you go so that was a little bit more complicated than I wanted it to be this extra joiner I, I'm sure they're tough enough I mean they're a lot more um, tough than you know nothing being there at all and they're very thick so hopefully there won't be any issues okay we've got to the point of bleeding the brakes I've got my nice uh, pressurized brake bleeding tool thing that I really like it's very good and it makes ble bleeding brakes much easier um, you connect on this pressurized bit under here and that seal that seals itself so you can it independently I'll put it to about 20 psi uh, see that the maximum I think is sensible really for doing this but we can have a bit of um, fun doing it because I don't know how long it's going to take to bleed through but probably get a load of um, bubbles first but I'm going to connect this up just so that it's pressurizing the system up a bit and then I'm going to get my bleeding stuff out and then we'll see where we get to there's plenty of fluid in here but do keep checking once you've done a bit of bleeding it's it's got a way to go before it gets too min so I wasn't going to top it up until um, it got a bit further down and before I start bleeding I've just come under the car to make sure putting the pressurized bleeding tool on or pressurized brake because it hasn't started spraying out brake fluid everywhere. I mean, I can't see anything, I can't even see it weeping. So, I guess we look okay. 
there's a bit of residual brake fluid on the pipes but it looks all right to me so I would have thought by now if it was going to leak it would start leaking quite quickly and also I'm going to check here we aren't leaking brake fluid out uh, looks all right at the moment so that's okay and just check on the right hand side as well Sorry, I've got more on this one because these these were changed, so just make sure they're not. And then make sure up here. Okay, I think we're okay. Um, and we are going to start probably on the left corner just to get going because it's a bit nicer on that side uh, to see. And then we will go from there. We're going to see how long it takes for the uh, fluid to come through without bubbles. Here's um, my very expensive glass pot. We're getting some nice air coming through now. As you can see, the bubbles coming up. So we get to the point where we're pushing through that nasty um, air that was in the system. Just going to turn it off for a minute so I can just inspect the reservoir of the brake fluid. Okay, it's gone down a bit, so our pressure has maintained itself not too bad, so we are bleeding through. Uh, might just top that up a bit. The rubber band bit um, just obviously that's what you can see on this one this one has got one it's just uh, sort of perishing but it is there on the outside but it's it's just very old so I'm just going to replace it anyway um, along with the other ones and then you've got that sort of decent sort of uh, set of new um, new exhaust rubbers just to help you out So I'm on to my final check of these. They're still not leaking. Um, probably will just put my foot on the brake pedal a bit more and pump it. And just double, 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 double check. Um, and then if I'm happy, I'm gonna spray some kind of um, stone chip on here or something just to give a bit of a coating around the brake pipes where we've sort of stripped them down a bit and everything. So it should all just be sort of a little bit sealed. I know it's not gonna be perfect. I might just spray um, up here, up on the right hand side where I can see the pipes are a little bit crudded there because the heat shield doesn't go all the way up um, and I'm going to start trying to uh, put the heat shield back on and then I'm going to start trying to manoeuvre the exhaust I haven't got any help today which is usually how it goes so I'm going to see whether I can actually manoeuvre the exhaust on my own um, and what I did last time is I left it clipped on at the back and use my jack with the um, piece of wood on it, the MDF, um, which I'll get out again and we'll see whether that will help us get up and reconnected. So that's the next steps. I realized at the end of the video, it's a bit nondescript again. I set the camera up, assuming that it would kind of film that kind of angle. And then I really didn't remember to move the camera. Before I put back the heat shields, I put on some stone chip onto the newly made pipes and the connectors. That meant that hopefully there'll be some protection over the winter from corrosion. Mm -hmm. 